walk with me. You walk with my sister. Walk with me. Scripture will be Acts 26, All right. 1, 2, and 28. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself. I think myself happy, King Agrippa because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. <laughs> I have read Acts 26, 1 and 2, and 28. May the Lord have a blessed reading, hearing of his holy word. Let us pray with bow down head and humble heart. Right now, my Father, we honor you, for you are who you are, my Father. You sit high and look low. You know all about what's going on in this world right now, my Father. There was a glitch by a computer, but they didn't consult the master computer. They do, they're looking on man to help. If they only land and depend on you, everything will be all right, my father. We're in a world of confusion right now, my father. People don't know which way to turn. They don't know what side of the aisle they're on, my father. They don't know what politician they like. But if they believe in one thing, you got to love Jesus. He's the answer for everything. He can fix it. Like I said, just stand still. And watch you work. But we want to move too fast for him. So sometimes you got to pull our coattails. And say sit down. Listen to me. I will not steal you wrong. Because I speak the truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. Man lies. But Jesus and God do not. Right my father we give you honor and praise and glory my father. Touch the path of this church, my father. Yes, from his crown and head of sofa, my father. Yes, Touch his help make this stand beside him, my father. Yes, Touch his associate minister, my father. Yes, Touch from the choir stand to the usher row, my father. From side to side, my father. Even we have business today, my father. <clears throat> Bless them too, my father. Yes, Let them know God got this. We don't have it, but God got this. 
Right in my father, there are a lot of sickness and death. We knew all about that for the, for the beginning of the world, my father. You knew who would be here today, my father. Well, thank the one that's here. Bless the one that's on the way, my father. Even bless the one that's not here, my father. Right now, my father, bless the prayer for the bereaved too, my father. Let them know we may come at night, but joy will come in the morning. There's no more phone calls, no more knock on the door. But the Lord's phone is never busy. Just call him up. Just call him up. Just call him up. So, my Father, we're standing right now on your word, my Father. Not man's word, but your word, my Father. We said on this rock. We all know what it is. Jesus the rock, my Father. The God of the earth, my Father. And bless the one who's going to bring the word, my Father. Especially from the crown of his head to the soul of feet, my Father. He rightly divided it, my Father. He don't sugarcoat it. He don't water it down. He speaks the gospel. That's what you got to listen to. It's not about what it is. It's who he's talking about. Forgive us our sin. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 It is now time for our announcement as well as uh, welcome today. Amen. Welcome is first. You're welcome once, you're welcome twice, you're welcome three times in the name of Jesus Christ. Give God a hand of praise. What's going on? We thank God we had some guests in the house. We're so grateful to have you here with us. We just want to bless the Lord today. We want to give him the honor, the glory, and the praise. If that's what you want to do, give God another hand of praise. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. God know we are in order, so we are just fine. First, give an honor to God, to our pastor, to the other ministers on the roster, anyone that's proclaiming the word of God, we're going to give them honor. I'm here to read your announcements this morning. Sunday School Workshop, Saturday, August the 10th at 10 a.m. The theme is being disciples for Christ in a dying world. Matthew 28 18 through 20, and you can contact Reverend Brown or Sister Renee Delaney. Wow. And this workshop is not just for the teachers, it's not just for the Sunday school students, it's for everyone to come out and receive a blessing. In the past, it seemed like it's just the teachers are here, but this workshop is for everyone. Wow. Business meeting. New Hope Baptist Church quarterly business meeting Monday, July the 29th at 7 p.m. in the social hall. Deacon John Holland, chairperson, Reverend M. L. Carter, pastor. Amen. Thank you for lending me your ears. God bless you. Praise the Lord, saints. I bring my material with me. So when the enemy try to attack me, he know I got it. But I don't think I need it. It's a mighty good thing 
to be chosen by God. It's a mighty good thing, Lord, it's such a good thing to be chosen to serve. Don't ever complain when he calls your name. The job might seem hard, but you'll get a special reward when you're chosen by God. It's such a good thing to be chosen by God. To be chosen by God.
Amen. It is now time for the altar prayer. Amen. We already know that there's plenty of people that is in need of prayer. There's a lot of people on the sick and shed in, and we know there's a lot behind prison walls as well that need our prayers. Amen. Amen. Let's go before God. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ, Hallelujah. Lord, we come before you right now, Father God. God, because we know, Father God, you are the answer to all our needs, Father God. Father, first and foremost, Father God, we ask that you forgive us, Lord God, of all things said, done, and thought. Father God, we ask you to remove it, Father God, to never be seen again, Father God. Then we ask in the name of Jesus, Father God, that you just touch this waiting congregation that is here today, Father God. Lord, Father God, you know the inside of our hearts, Father God. Lord, we might look good on the outside, oh God, but what's going on on the inside this morning, Father God? Lord, somebody is going through this morning, Father God. Somebody, Lord God, have a hung down head this morning. Somebody, Father God, don't know which way to turn this morning. But Father God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, I'm asking you to touch right now, Father God. I'm asking you to minister to them, Father God, each and every one that is here today. From the choir, Father God, all the way to the back, from side to side, Father God, minister to your people today, Father God. Lord, through your word, Father God, Lord, let yokes be broken, Lord God, that you, Lord God, may be glorified, Father God. It is all about you today, Father God. It's always all about you, God. Lord, you are unchanging God, Lord. Now, you're the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, Father God. And Lord, we walk by faith and not by sight. And whatever we go through, Father God, we we know, Lord God, if we trust in you, oh God, if we walk in you, oh God, if you light up our footsteps, oh God, we will, Lord God, be seen through our trials and tribulations that we face each and every day, Father God. Heal that person that's in, this, in their sick bed today, Father God. Touch him now, Father God. Lord, have your way, Father God, on our young people, Father God. They are going through, Father God. Lord, for that matter, we all are going through, Father God. Lord, touch around the world, Father God, all the distraction of war and rumors of war that are going on. Father God, touch the President of the United States, those that might be coming in, Father God. Lord, we don't have control over nothing, but God, you're in control, Father God. It don't matter who wins the race, God, but Lord, if we trust and believe in you, oh God, everything is going to be all right, Father God. We're trusting and putting our trust in you today, Father Father God, Father, we just ask that you would touch this church, oh God. Father, that you would have your way upon it, Father God. Lord, I pray for Pastor Carter right now, God, that you would touch him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, Father God. Let him preach the unadulterated uh, gospel of Jesus Christ today, Father God. Touch him now in the name of Jesus. Touch his family. Touch his wife, Father God. Touch our deacons and deaconesses, oh God. Father, just have your way today. Rain down your spirit upon us today, Father God. Having your way, Father Father God, helping us, Lord God, to get a little closer to you today, God, because we are in need of you, Father God. Lord, not just a little bit, but a lot of it, God, because, Lord, we go through, Father God, each and every day, Father God. Just living for you, Father God, is a task, Lord God, but without you, Lord God, none of it would be possible, and for that, God, I thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you've done each and every day that we live, Father God. Have your way. Thank you for the association, Father God, for all that went on this week, Father God. Thank you for the deacons and the preachers, Father God, that just had their way in you, dear God, giving your word, Lord God, teaching your word today, Father God. Thank you for everything that you do for us, God. Father God, we're going to praise you this morning. We're going to glorify your name, God, for all that you do each and every day, Father God. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. Amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, it is now given time. As the ushers move forward, some of the ways that you can give your tithes and offering is by mailing them to P.O. Box 834. Seaside, California, 93955. 
or you can go to nhbc-seaside.com. As well, you can use www.giblify.com. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, Father in heaven, we come before you this morning, Lord, Father, first of all, to say thank you. We thank you, Lord, Father, for raising us this morning, Lord, Father. Let us live to see this day. And now, Father, we actually, Lord, Father, bless those within this building. Lord, Father, we actually, Lord, Father, bless them as we give, Lord, Father, a portion of what you've given to us. And then, Father, we actually, Lord, Father, just bless the giver and those who have to give and do not have to give, Father. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm just praising my Lord. 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 Oh.
again. We come to you, Lord Father, to say thank you to those for the gift that's been given to you this morning, Father. We thank you, Lord Father, for the build that it be used for upbuilding your kingdom, Lord Father. We thank you, Lord Father. We ask you to bless again those who gave and did not have to give, Father. We thank you, Lord Father, and in the precious name of Jesus the Christ, we do pray. Amen. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. To God be the glory. For what he's done for us, he could do for others. I give him all the praise. <laughs> I'm here for a reason, Lord. I know you got me here for a reason. And I can thank you. the glory and the honor I lift my hands in worship and I bless your holy name you deserve the glory and the honor I lift my hands your holy name cause you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you there is no one else like you you are great you do miracles so great there is no
Good morning, church. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Let's put our hands together. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I'm glad to be here on this morning with you. I'm excited about this opportunity that we've been presented today. Um, first, good honor to God, respect to my pastor, to all the ministers here in the pulpit. Um, let me calm down for a second. I've been running. Uh, <laughs> always something. Um, I'm just happy to have this opportunity to um, present to you and introduce to you um, this world-renowned choir that's here visiting with us this morning. They're here on tour. This morning, they're not on tour. They're actually here to worship with us this morning. In the midst of their tour and going, they need to be fed. Amen. And so they're here to be fed. There's no other like my pastor that could deliver that word. That's going to give you what you need to sustain you and keep you while you're on this road. It, what, to, we're going to pray over you for your safety as you travel. We saw the craziness that's been going on here with the airlines and everything because of the computer glitches. So we're, go, we're here to worship and praise with you. So I just want to publicly just say to my pastor, thank you for this opportunity. I appreciate you. And we want to present to you, ushers, as I'm talking, I can be here talking for a second while we um, bring up the, the um, Colorado Mass Choir. And I want to keep talking um, and let you know, um, Brother Terrell, my, Terrell, Mark, thank you. My, I just had a brain freeze. Terrell, grew up here in this area. He grew up here in Fort Ord. And he, him and his parents, I remember Terrell as a little boy, him and his brothers, they, 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 they're blessed and gifted. And their mother used to be a phenomenal singer, and her father was a pastor and preacher. And I even believe our own Deacon Hall used to work with his mother back in the day. And so we're just honored to have this great choir under the leadership of Terrell Mark. Let's give them a hand praise as they come up to us and as they minister with us. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. God is so good, ain't he? We are so grateful to be here. Thank you so much, Pastor, for allowing us to crash this great service. Um, man, I feel the presence of the Lord in here. The men's choir, you guys did so amazing. And uh, it's good to be back here in uh, Seaside, California. It's been some years since, <laughs> since I've been here, and uh, I, it just feel like family already. Um, thank God for my un Uncle Walter and my Uncle Snoopy up here. It's been so long. And um, I remember growing up here, I was always playing drums everywhere and, and uh, playing with uh, Snoopy. As he played every instrument that was known to mankind. <laughs> and it was just so amazing. Um, I just thank God for this choir. We have been through a lot trying to get down here because of all the glitches and stuff at the airport. Um, some of us uh, didn't get any rest, any sleep, or anything like that. Um, but God is so good because we're here safe and sound. Amen. Amen. So as uh, Minister Walter said, we're just going to come and worship with you. Is that okay? Yeah. 
Um, we just love to worship. We love to praise God. It's all about him. It's not about us. So we just want God to use us in any way that he can. Amen. Thank you so much.
Jesus. We thank you, O oh God, for our, our eyes have seen what our hearts have felt, how you move through not only our hearts but through this place. Thank you, Father, for, for, for showing up in the house. It's not worship unless you're here. And this choir came to worship. Thank you, O oh God. But I would be remiss if I didn't say that our male chorus came to worship, too. <laughs> we thank you, O oh God. Thank you for sending us what I needed. It's been a good week, but been a tough week. Been going since Wednesday all day through Saturday. And some of us of us will admit the fact that we're tired. I heard some of these choir members talk about they didn't even get some sleep, so I know that they're tired. But how many know the Holy Ghost can empower you? <laughs> and so, Father, have your way now. Let the words of my mouth and meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Thank you for Walter. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for Walter that you would give him insight. He knows how I am. And so thank you, Father, for him. Thank you, God. Now have your way now. In the marvelous, matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Let every heart say amen. amen. From Acts, the 26th chapter, verses 1 and 2. God bless y'all. God bless y'all. God bless y'all. God sent y'all here today, I'm telling you. He sent y'all here today. <laughs> oh, man, Walter just think it was his idea. <laughs> yes, sir. From Acts 26, verse 1 and 2, and then I'm going to skip down to verse 28. We find these words. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, you are permitted to speak for yourself. Then Paul stretched forth his hand and answered for himself. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before you, before you touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews. Down to verse 28. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, almost, you persuade me to be a Christian. May the Lord bless the reading, hearing, and doing of his holy word. You may be seated in the sanctuary. Our theme for this morning's message, I thank God for my wife. We, we, the, <laughs> our theme for this morning's message is, I can speak for myself. I, I, I have a sub-theme as well. I have a sub-theme as well. My sub-theme is, I'm not almost saved, I'm unapologetically saved. I'm not almost saved, I'm unapologetically saved. In, in this passage of scripture, we see the Apostle Paul speaking up for himself against false accusations uh, others were saying about him. He, he needed to speak for himself how Jesus qualified him when others were trying to disqualify him. They were trying to disqualify him because of his preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Fact of the matter is they wanted to kill him for the gospel. But Paul sets the record straight that because of Jesus, that was the only reason that he was able to live, move, and have his being. Yes, okay. Paul was grateful for what the Lord had done. Anybody grateful for what the Lord has done for you? Paul was grateful for what the Lord had done for him. And so in this text, the Apostle Paul, he is in the city of Caesarea. He is under house arrest, held in chains, 
under the false accusations of inciting sedition, of causing rebellion against the Roman government. Yes, Yet the real reason for all of Paul's trouble, the real reason for all of Paul's problems is that he is a witness for Jesus Christ. Do you have a problem because you are a witness for Jesus Christ? Or are you a member of the secret society? Hmm. So, so, so he, 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 his problem is because of his witness of Jesus Christ. While he is held captive, Festus, the Roman governor of the territory, is in the company of King Agrippa, who is the king of Judea. Paul is brought before Festus in the presence of King Agrippa and others to state his defense against the accusations of the Jews. Yes, Festus is no fan of Paul, right. but he seeks Agrippa's counsel regarding this matter. And so in Acts 26, verse 1, our, our first verse, it says, Then Agrippa said unto Paul, You are permitted to speak for yourself. Then Paul stretched forth his hand and answered for himself. So, so there's a term that is often used in Christian circles called Christian apologetics. You ever heard of that? Christian apologetics is the biblical defense of the Christian faith against different theological and doctrinal attacks. It is, uh, uh, the, the, the apologetics is when someone is confronted with an accusa accusation against their faith and the defendant would reply with an apologia or in other words, with a solid defense of a firm biblical truth. For instance, for instance, the Apostle Paul says in Romans 1.16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation for everyone that believes to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. That's apologetics. This defense of the truth is known as apologetics. And Paul, watch this now, Paul is not apologizing for being saved. Paul is not apologizing. He is not ashamed yeah. of being saved. Paul says he is unapologetically yeah. saved. He's not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Yes, so King Agrippa, he tells Paul that he may speak for himself, or in other words, he may defend himself mm -hmm. against those who were accusing him. Yes, yes. By the way, King Agrippa is the great-grandson of Herod the Great, who caused Joseph and Mary to flee to Egypt because he wanted to kill the baby Jesus. Right. Agrippa's grandfather, Herod Antipas, had John the Baptist beheaded who introduced Jesus. Right. Agrippa's father, Herod Agrippa I, had the apostle James, the brother of John the gospel writer, he had him put to death for preaching about Jesus. And so, watch this now, Agrippa's great-grandfather tried to kill the baby Jesus. His, his grandfather killed John the Baptist, who introduced Jesus. His father killed James, the brother of John, for preaching Jesus. And now Paul is standing before Agrippa II, who tells him, speak for yourself concerning this same Jesus. Agri watch this, Agrippa's bloodline has a history of hating on Jesus. Yet he tells Paul to speak for himself or to defend himself about this same Jesus. How many know God is doing a setup here? Because this looks like a setup. It looks like Paul's being set up, but God is the one doing the setup. God is the one doing the setup because he set Paul up to preach the gospel. And my question is, have you missed your opportunity when God set you up? Or did you just keep your mouth shut? You're saying something, Pastor. Some of us been set up and missed the opportunity. But how many know that you ought to tell somebody? Y'all, y'all playing with me. You ought to tell somebody how good the Lord has been. Has he been good to you? Has he been good to you? Then you ought to tell somebody. Carter. No, no, note that Paul is neither ashamed nor afraid to speak for himself. Paul, he's been accused of numerous false charges, mm -hmm. but the real issue is his unwavering belief yeah. that Jesus died and rose from the dead. Amen. For this reason, Paul is called to defend himself yes. by the descendant of a family 
that has a history of hating on Jesus. Watch this. I'm so glad my mama taught me about Jesus. I'm so glad my mama's mama taught her about Jesus. I'm so glad that I come from a line of folk that love Jesus. I'm glad that I come from a line of folk that love. Do I have a witness in here that you come from a line? And watch this, watch this. Even if you don't come from a line, if you love Jesus, that's all that matters. Agrippa, Agrippa says you are permitted to speak for yourself. Agrippa tells Paul he may speak his own defense against the accusations that are declared against him. Agrippa, watch this, is actually curious to hear what Paul has to say. And so the text says, then Paul stretched forth his hand and answered for himself. Paul began his defense. He starts in Acts 26, verse 4. He starts there talking about his youth and how he was a proud Jewish boy. And he went to verse 14, Acts 26, 14, where he had a Damascus Road experience and he came to realize, he came to know Jesus for him. Anybody here know Jesus for yourself? I'm not talking about what your mama taught you. I'm not talking about what your daddy know him for yourself. I know him for myself. So Paul, Paul, he needed to speak for himself because the Jews were attacking his character. Jews desired to kill Paul to shut him up because he preached about Jesus. And they thought they could do it by first attacking his character. But sometimes you need to speak up for yourself. Sometimes, listen, sometimes you need to stand up to haters. You can't just let folk just hate on you and you just can't let folk hate on you. Sometimes, listen, don't slap nobody, but sometimes you need to open your mouth and say something. (laughs) The Jews desired to kill Paul, shut him up from preaching about Jesus. They thought they could do it by first attacking His character. And sometimes you just need to open your mouth and say something. Paul says in Acts 26, verse 2, he says, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before you, touching all the things where am I am accused of the Jews. So Paul, he tells King Agrippa, I appreciate this opportunity to speak before you. I appreciate this opportunity to speak before you. (laughs) Paul says, I appreciate this opportunity to speak before you to set the record straight. Paul was being accused of betraying his Jewish nationality by declaring his faith in Jesus. But while he was a proud Jewish boy, while he had proud Jewish heritage, he was an unapologetical, he was an unapologetical lover of Jesus How many know that overrides everything else? That, come on now, come on now. That overrides everything else. By declaring his faith, he preaches, he declares how he loved Jesus. And so Paul, he's grateful. He's great. How many grateful? Some of y'all act like you half grateful. Some of you... Some of you act like you're half grateful. That's like being almost, almost a Christian. Some of you, some of you act like you're half grateful. That's like almost being a Christian. If you're grateful, you ought to open your mouth and say something. You don't need to wait for me to tell you. You know what the Lord has brought you from. By declaring his faith in Jesus. He declares that Jesus is the one that brought him out. While he was proud of his Jewish heritage, he was unapologetic about his Jesus. Paul was grateful. 
grateful that Jesus died and rose for his sin. Now Festus, watch this, Festus, watch this, Festus, he's so bothered by Paul's defense of the gospel that in Acts 26, 24, he tells Paul, much learning does make you crazy. <laughs> y'all, y'all, y'all don't hear me. Festus said Paul is crazy because he's talking about Jesus. I want you to know Jesus don't make me crazy, but I'm crazy about Jesus. <laughs> you might think I'm crazy, but I'm going to shout to the rafters how good Jesus has been to me. Do I, do I have a witness in here? Festus is so bothered because of Paul's defense of the gospel. He has, oh, Paul, much learning has made you nuts. Watch this. It was easier for Festus to call Paul crazy than to receive Christ as his Lord and Savior. Festus called Paul crazy, but Agrippa was curious. Agrippa was so curious that Acts 26, 28, our last verse says, Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost you persuade me to be a Christian. Now, 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 that, that text is often misinterpreted because it sounds like that Agrippa is, I'm right there, I'm, I'm about to cross over. I'm, I'm, I'm. No, it wasn't like that. The word almost in the text comes from the Greek word oligos. Oligos means almost. It means ever so slightly. It means, it means very little. And so Agrippa says, very little evidence, on very little evidence, you think you can persuade me to be a Christian? He ain't trying to be no Christian. Acts 20, watch this, Acts 26, 27, Paul says to King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? Come on. I know that you believe. Yeah. Why did he say that? Well, the fact was that Agrippa was an expert in Jewish law oh, and customs. Yeah. That, that gave him an advantage that Festus did not have. So while Festus thought Paul was crazy, Agrippa should have recognized Jesus when he showed up on the scene. If you say you love the Lord, you ought to know when he show up. Yes, sir. So the problem, the problem, the problem Agrippa had the same mentality as his ancestors before him. He did not believe in Jesus. Problem was he didn't want to give up the world. He didn't want to give up his wealth. He didn't want to give up his title. He didn't want to give up his sin. What we see here is the power of the gospel and the penalty of the gospel coming together. The gospel is so compelling, yet the great-grandson of King Herod the Great, who tried to kill the baby Jesus, said there's little chance of me becoming a Christian. The gospel is so powerful, yet the grandson of Herod Antipas, who killed John the Baptist, said there's little chance of me becoming a Christian. The gospel is so truthful, yet the son of Herod, Agrippa I, who killed James, the brother of John, says there's little chance of me becoming a Christian. Agrippa, he rejects the gospel, and he does not realize he declared and sealed his own everlasting faith. Watch this. His statement were the words of a man on his way to a burning hell. Not almost on his way. On his way. Aren't you glad this morning? I said, aren't you glad this morning that you are not almost on your way to heaven? Aren't you? His, his statement was the words of a man on his way to a burning hell, not almost on his way. He was all the way on his way to a burning hell. He was not almost lost. 
but he was all the way lost. How many know that 99 and a half won't do? How many know that you got to trust him, you got to believe him with all your heart, with all your mind? If you believe it, give God a hand of praise this morning. Agrippa, Agrippa says there was no chance of him becoming a Christian. For him, almost becoming a Christian is like the 49ers almost winning the Super Bowl. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Almost becoming a Christian is like the Denver Broncos almost winning the Super Bowl. Please come back and sing again. <laughs> watch this, watch this. But because Paul spoke up for, how many know you got to speak up for yourself? He declared he was all the way saved. He declared he was unapologetically saved. He declared that Jesus didn't almost come from heaven, that he came from heaven. Through 42 generations, took nails in his hands, nails in his feet. He died on Friday, but early Sunday morning. He didn't almost get up. How many know he got all the way up? You ought to bless his name. In 2 Corinthians, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Not almost. He is a new creature. All things are passed away. Not almost. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become, not almost. All things. Anybody want to bless the Lord this morning? Anybody? Anybody want to thank the Lord this morning that he's not an almost God? Anyone want to thank him that he did die, that he did raise, to save a wretch like you and me, and because of what he did, we're not almost saved. How many know you're all the way saved? Well, wow. If you wasn't saved this morning, you should really t take in consideration what the man said. He just preached the word of God, the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. What I want to say to you this morning is, are you going to stay in almost mode? You don't have to stay where you at this morning. There's plenty of people that don't know Christ. And there's plenty of people that come to church that don't have a relationship with Christ. Just because you come in these four doors all the time don't mean a darn thing if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And what we're offering today is a chance for you to give your life to the man from on high. This life that we're living, it ain't about nothing. But what Jesus Christ have to offer you is eternity. You, must, you might say today, how do I get to that point? What do I do to get to Jesus? Well, as simple as the ABCs. Admit that you're a sinner, B, believe that he is the only remedy for sin. C, confess him as your Lord and Savior. It's just that simple. It's just that easy. A lot of times, Pastor used to say, you don't have to turn cartwheels. You don't have to do algebra to get to God. It's just that simple. Where are you at this morning? How are you living your life? Does it mean anything to you to live for Christ? Because that's what it's all about at the end of the day. The world is a cold place. And we're living in a cold world. But Jesus offers you everlasting life this morning. If you want that life. For the man who died on the cross. Who gave his life. So that you might have life this morning. Will you give your life to him? 
when you give your life to the one who gave his life so that you might have life if you give your life to him. See, it's a give and take thing. You got to give up this world in order to have him. You got to give yourself in order to have him. That's the only way this thing works. He'll work out all the particulars in your life when you give your life to him. It's just that easy. If you need prayer this morning, come on up. Let us pray for you. If you're looking for a church home this morning, come on up. This is a great place to be. I love this church. I love being here. And I love what God is doing with Pastor Carter and the people of God. Amen. 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 We, this couple has come up for prayer. God bless y'all. God bless y'all. Somebody want to come and stand with them? Anybody else want to come and stand? With? How many know you need? How many know you stand in the need of prayer? Pray. We're going to pray for this choir as they travel. We're going to keep them in prayer. Yeah. We had, listen, we had three days of annual session, and we had great preaching, and we had great teaching, and I'm not going to lie, that it was, as good as that was, I was tired. I was tired come Saturday, and then we had to come back for the symposium, so I was running ragged. And so, and so sometimes you can, listen, sometimes you can hear a word that'll move you, and by the end of that day, you back down in the doldrums. We need prayer. We need prayer. Lord, Father in heaven, we come before your throne of grace once again, Father. Father, we ask thee, Lord, Father, be your will. In the name of Jesus, Father, would you touch each body that's standing before you this day? Father, you know only what's on their heart, Father. We ask not to tell us, but move on them, Father. We thank you, Lord, Father. We ask thee, Lord, Father, for there be any sick in this crowd, Lord, Father. Bless them, Lord, Father. Touch our elder this day, Lord, Father. Father, we ask thee, Lord, Father, just to give us strength to move on, Father. Father, we thank you, Lord, Father, for you not being an almost God, Father. We thank you, Lord, Father, for not almost blessing us, Father. We just thank you, Lord, Father. We ask thee, Lord, Father, just to wrap your arms all around us, Lord, Father. We stand before you this day, Lord, Father. Heal the sin-sick soul, Lord, Father. Then, Father, we ask thee, Lord, Father, give this ma mass choir traveling grace, Lord, Father. Wherever you choose to send them, Father, bless them in their travel, Father. We ask thee, Lord, Father, just touch this couple that came before you this day for prayer, Lord Father. Bring them closer to you, Lord Father. Lord Father, if there's any that's not in fellowship with, with you, Father, we ask thee, Lord Father, just to wrap your arms of love around them. We thank you, Lord Father. Bless our pastor, Lord Father, his family, Lord Father. Bless our sister Carter, Lord Father. Touch her, Lord Father. Touch her, Lord Father. Bless her soul, Lord Father. You know her need. And we ask thee, Lord Father, just bless this church setting. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen, amen. So uh, I just got news that uh, President Joe Biden stepped down from running, yeah, yeah. How, how many know it's in God's hands? It's in God's hands. How many, how many know it doesn't matter who is in the White House, that God is in control? Let's bow our head. Let, let, we're going to pray. We're going to pray for our nation. Dear God in heaven, we thank you for your grace. Thank you, O oh God, for your mercy, your loving kindness. Thank you, Father, for your precious Son, the Christ. Through him, you have saved us, given us eternal life. Through your spirit, you have sealed us unto the day of redemption. 
And then through your word, you have sustained us that we might carry on just one more step, just one more day. And so, Father, we thank you. Have your way now. We pray for all the churches open in your name. We pray for every pastor standing behind this sacred desk. We pray for new hope individually and collectively. Again, Father, we pray for this Colorado Mass Choir. Give them traveling grace. Keep them. Let them continue to sing to your glory that you might bless them everywhere they go and others will be blessed by them. And then, Father, we pray for President Joe Biden. We pray for his family, Father. You know what he's going through. You know what the situation is. And then, Father, what's going on in the nation? Nothing is catching you off guard. Nothing is catching you by surprise. From the foundation of the world, you already knew. Every situation knew how it would turn out. And so, Father, it's not that we look to presidents. We look to the one who sits high and looks low to keep us. And then, Father, we ask that you would just continue as we prepare to leave this place but not your presence. And remind us, O oh God, that when we go from this, this place, let us not be silent saints, but let us tell someone about a Savior who don't almost save you, but will all the way save you if you put your trust in him. Thank you, O oh God. In the blessed name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us stand for benediction. And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power henceforth and forevermore. And they all sang together. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Hey, hey y'all, come up and, and, and say thank you to this choir.